Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about uh, distributed locking and synchronization. So assume we have three node system where all three nodes are trying to access the same piece of data. Now, since all of them might be doing some operations on this data in parallel, so there are chances that uh, if they don't synchronize in some fashion, uh, they might end up corrupting this data. Uh, so this data could be something uh, stored on your database or it could be any shared resource, like let's say printer, right? Where uh, let's say these uh, nodes are trying to print. If they are not synchronizing, we might end up having a result which we did not intend it to. So we'll try to understand this more uh, in details in, in the later sections. So, but the overall thing is that there's a shared resource which uh, multiple distributed nodes are trying to access at the same time. And uh, to modify or to access this resource, they need to coordinate in some fashion. So distributed locking is the technique using which you uh, achieve this functionality. Uh, without distributed locking, we will see concurrency issues which will lead us to either race conditions or data inconsistencies. And it might also lead into incorrect order of operations. To take an example, assume a scenario of flash sales where you have a limited inventory and uh, a lot of users are trying to purchase the goods. Now, if you don't have distributed locking in place, then uh, you might end up running into overselling. So think that let's say you have a single item left in your inventory and a lot of users have, are trying to purchase. If you don't handle it correctly, all the nodes will see it as a single item available and multiple nodes handling multiple requests might sell the same item to the multiple users. Other example uh, for the ordering part is Google Docs. So if a lot of people are editing Google Docs simultaneously, and if you don't see the order of operations that is going into the edits, then you might end up overwriting other users' data and the final update might not look uh, what was intended and we should be able to handle it with the distributed locking that order of operations are maintained another example is the right booking apps which is the same as the uh, inventory example where uh, one driver should be assigned only one request so before going into mo more details on how to implement distributed locking so let's uh, understand the uh, terminologies locking and synchronization better so locking is actually a process uh, of controlling access to the shared resource. Synchronization here is basically uh, your resource which is being used by different processes, right? That resource should be used in a specific manner so that your final outcome is um, as expected. Let's look at it from the uh, code point of view. To synchronize the access to this resource, you take a lock and only the person who has acquired the lock will be able to access the shared resource. And once you are done with the shared resource, uh, you release the lock so that other people can operate on the same resource. So effectively, locking is a method which is being used to synchronize the operations. So let's take a look at how the locking will work in a single node system. So in a single node system, let's say you have a process and the process has a lot of threads and all the threads are simultaneously trying to access a shared resource. So in this case, uh, we have these seven threads which are trying to access this shared resource. All the threads will be first trying to take a lock and then the thread which is able to successfully acquire the lock, only that thread will be able to access the shared resource. Other threads will be waiting. And once this thread is done, it will release the lock and uh, some other thread will be able to acquire the lock and be able to access the shared resource. So that's how it will work in a single node system. Typical technique to uh, do this process is uh, you have two options, uh, mutex and semaphore. The difference between mutex and semaphore is mutex are generally used where one process can access a particular resource, but semaphores are basically general implementation of uh, mutex where you can allow n number of uh, processes to access a particular resource. So now let's take a look at how distributed locking is different from single node locking. So in a distributed system, there will be multiple nodes uh, and the processes running on these distributed nodes will be trying to access a shared resource and to restrict the access to the shared resource, we will be using distributed lock managers and uh, these distributed lock managers will ensure that only one process or one thread is able to access that shared resource 
So in this example, uh, this process on node two is accessing the shared resource based on um, uh, its success uh, on getting the log. Once this node, uh, this process releases the log, other processes uh, will be able to access the resource. Implementing distributed locking is uh, often complex because it requires implementing uh, either distributed log managers or there are other ways like uh, consensus algorithms, which are like a wrapped and Paxos, which are hard to implement. So with distributed log manager, this is how the system looks like and uh, where multiple nodes are trying to acquire the log uh, with, with the distributed log manager and coordinating this access uh, where multiple nodes uh, over the network are trying to access the log. It is uh, complex due to the coordination mechanisms required. Effectively, it comes down to implementation of your distributed log manager where it needs to uh, provide three functionalities uh, First is where it should it should uh, provide the mutual exclusion where only one process should be able to access uh, resource at a time. Second is it should not have deadlocks where uh, uh, any node having uh, log if it crashes, uh, it should not cause into deadlocks and eventually it should be able to recover and allow locking via other nodes. And third is that since it is a distributed uh, system, so the distributed log manager itself should be fault tolerant and be available for logging. So now that we understand uh, what does distributed logging uh, require, uh, let's take a look at a few techniques which are typically used to implement the distributed logging. So one of the most commonly used approach of implementing the distributed log managers is via Redis. So Redis provides a, a, a atomic operation of acquiring a distributed log. So uh, effectively, you can set a key only if it is being updated. So uh, using this NX parameter in the uh, Redis set command, uh, this returns true only if I am able to set this key. So if all the nodes which are contending for the locking, uh, all will try to set this key and only one will succeed. So using this property of this Redis command, Redis will be able to ensure that only one person is able to acquire the log. Other, other nodes will see it as a failure and they will retry. Uh, and once the process which was able to successfully acquire the log is done with its processing, it will release the log on the key and other processes retrying will uh, gain the access and the process continues. So this is the most commonly used approach, which is implemented using Redis clients, where a single key uh, in the Redis can be used to implement the distributed log. But it's just the presence of this key which uh, acts as the log. Presence of the key plus who was able to set this key. If your process uh, who was trying to set this key uh, gets success, only that process will be able to uh, access the resource. Even the key is set in the Redis, other processes will see it as a failure. Now, how it is ensuring uh, deadlock free is we have the expiry rate. Right? So even if the process which has set this key goes down, so this key will expire after let's say 60 seconds and uh, other processes will be able to set this key and able to acquire the log. So, but, uh, but I have another question over here. So even if let's say the process goes down, let's, uh, let's hypothetically assume that the, uh, that the key was, uh, the lock was taken at time T. Uh, and it is supposed to expire as a T plus 60. Okay. Right. And the process goes down at T plus one. That means although that process has gone down at T plus one, the lock, the process is still now in it. It is now in deadlock position for next 59 seconds. Right. It is not actively removing on by checking if the process is up or not, but it is basically, it is a passive way of expiring the lock. Uh, you can say that way. So effectively, if you look at it, uh, there is a contention for 59 seconds that all the processes are waiting for, for the lock and the process which acquired the lock went down. Now, uh, after 60 seconds, as the key expires, the contention is removed. So effectively, your system is recoverable from deadlock scenarios. So that's where we call this approach deadlock free. Uh, but uh, uh, so this may work in the cases where a lock is required for a, sm a smaller duration. 
but if there is a case where the lock is required for a longer duration in that case it can have some implications correct so it depends on your application to application like uh, okay. the actual process uh, which is doing some task you need to see that this task runs for how much time uh, okay. right and based on that task execution window and uh, basically how much time you need for synchronization uh, that time will be used to evaluate like how much time uh, you need for the locking. So you'll take some safe buffer as well and use that and uh, in the in the final implementation. So while this approach works, this approach also has uh, uh, downsides. Uh, for other approaches, there are consensus algorithms like Raft and Paxos. These consensus algorithms uh, are uh, commonly used in systems like Kafka or uh, big distributed uh, databases. These algorithms are uh, tough to implement, tough to master. So typically uh, in normal applications, uh, people will not use it because uh, there are chances that you might end up writing a lot of bugs uh, while trying to implement these things. So as an alternative to that, people use systems which internally uses these uh, algorithms. So these are the ETCD Zookeeper console are the examples which are which people use for implementing distributed locking as well. So these are key value stores which uh, which are distributed key value stores which uh, ensures that your data is uh, consistent. Uh, it also mitigates the issue with the Redis where uh, where Redis fails. As a last resort, uh, you can also implement your custom implementation uh, as a uh, custom service, which can act, uh, work as a distributed log manager. Uh, something like, let's say, you put a MySQL box and use primary key as a um, as, as your log key, and only the person which is able to create that key wins and uh, gets the log. You mentioned that when uh, a node which is taking the log, uh, it goes down, it can cause deadlock in the system. Can you uh, explain that in a simple fashion for uh, for our listeners? Sure. So let's let's look at this diagram, right? So where one process on the node 2 has acquired the log. Now, uh, while acquiring the log from the distributed log manager, uh, uh, it got the success. And once, uh, just after getting success, let's say node goes down. Now, if uh, from the distributed log manager's point of view, some process has acquired the log, uh, but that process is now uh, down and it's not there. When other processes are trying to take a log, distributed log manager will say that some other process has acquired the log and, uh, and that process does not exist. So effectively, the system has reached in a deadlock scenario that no other process is able to acquire the log mm. and uh, you cannot continue here. So this is the deadlock scenario where your system is just halt. So, so in Redis scenario, this is solved by having a TTL or an expiry for that key. Correct. So by putting a TTL here, we are ensuring that if a node has acquired a log for a time duration longer than it is expected to take, it expires the key and the other processes can enter that critical section by uh, taking a log. So Sunny, you mentioned that there are some issues while using Redis as a lock manager. Can you uh, explain some of those issues? Sure. One of the key property that you also ensures that your distributed lock manager is also highly available, right? So when you are using a system like Redis in a HA mode, uh, effectively you are running two nodes, right? Uh, one is your master and at second is your slave. And how Redis HA works is, you uh, like anything that is being uh, written on to the Redis or being updated, it asynchronously replicated to the uh, slave instance. Now what happens is when you, let's say some, some node was able to acquire the log while it was being replicated, let's say your master of uh, Redis went down and the replication uh, did not happen. Uh, when the slave becomes master, it will not see that the process one has acquired that log 
and when on the other processes try to take the log, they will be able to acquire that log. So now there will be two processes which will, would have successfully acquired the log. It's a rare scenario, but because of the uh, inherent design of the Redis HA, uh, there are chances that multiple nodes will be able to acquire that log simultaneously. So this is a gap in the while using the Redis. And to avoid that, people use systems like uh, this etcd console or zookeeper, which are distributed uh, data stores, but they are CP data stores, which are consistent and partition tolerance. So they will always ensure that all the nodes see same copy of the data and thus en ensuring that uh, there are no mismatch in the multiple copies of the data and you are able to do it in a fashion how you expect it to be. So that's it folks. So if you folks still have any questions, feel free to comment that uh, on the video. We'll be happy to answer them and feel free to share uh, this video with your friends uh, who wants to learn about distributed locking and synchronization and subscribe to our channel.